A very happy morning to everyone out there watching this video. We're looking here at a simplified derivation procedure for the ellipsoid volume. There are many routes to deriving the volume formula for an ellipsoid. We're looking here at an easy simplified manner which will take into account a very interesting and necessary assumption. I have come up with this procedure over here. It can lead you to a good formula for an ellipsoid volume derivation. If you have a horizontally directed ellipse, you could even have used a vertically, but this is a horizontally directed ellipse. You know there's a major axis and there's a minor axis. We know all of this from the videos on ellipses. The major axis is 2a, the minor axis length is 2b, and a values are always larger than b. We know ellipses have a certain eccentricity, which is why they're not spherical. Because of that eccentricity, you have a value which falls between 1 and 0, 1 being more eccentric, 0 being less eccentric. For this ellipse directed about the origin with a center at the origin, we know this right here is the equation x squared or a squared plus y squared or b squared equals 1. If you were to give this a three-dimensional nature, you would end up with an ellipsoid and that's what it looks like. There are several types of ellipsoid solids out there. There's spherical, oblate and prolate. We don't have to get too fancy here with terminology, but just know that there are several types of ellipsoids out there. Let's start here with this derivation procedure, focusing first on that assumption that we will take over here. The assumption we will take in this video for this volume derivation is this. If you start here with the sphere, and you know exactly what a sphere is, it's a three-dimensional attribute provided to a circle. If you take a slice, a cross-sectional slice, you know in any direction the slice is always a circle, and the area of this circle is always pi r squared. If you look at that ellipsoid we have over there, and you were to take a cross-sectional slice, whether it's horizontally or vertically, it doesn't matter, but you'd always end up with an ellipse as a cross-sectional slice. If you were to look at these flat on, because here we're looking at them at a side, but even at a flat on, you'd still have what would look very well like an ellipse cross-section. But the area over here cannot really be pi r square, right? It cannot. You know, circles, when you look at them very dead on, you have something called a radius, but it's a radius in all dimensions. You really have a pi r square. When you look at an ellipse at any cross-sectional slice, whether it's vertically or horizontally directed, you have from a center two different segments. You have something which is an B and something which is an A. A major axis segment and a minor axis segment, B or an A. But if you were to assume that this cross-sectional slice could be very well mirrored by this, because look at it, area of this slice could be, we know that the formula for the area of an ellipse is pi AB, but if you were to assume that you're really looking at here where A is equal to R and B is equal to R, then you're kind of looking at a pi R square, then you could give this a certain circular cross-sectional slice characteristic and you could proceed with the integration that way. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that when you're looking at a, an ellipsoid figure and you give it a plot, a three-dimensional plot, let's say from a minus A to A, you can look at each of these cross-sectional slices which will develop, but those cross-sectional slices are really ellipses in shape, having an area pi AB. But if you were to give this pi AB a pi R square characteristic, then you could essentially, from your lower limit to upper limit, you could carry this derivation procedure out and you could end up deriving the volume formula. So you don't really have to even put a pi AB over here. You could even get away with pi R square where one R represents an A and the other R represents a B. And that right there is the assumption you take to simplify this volume derivation for an ellipsoid. To start this volume derivation, after that assumption we've just taken, you need to start and find an equation, the equation which will lead you to your cross-sectional slice area and then that being integrated over the interval. If we look at a horizontally directed ellipse, which is this equation right here with the vertex at the origin, there's nothing wrong with you using this to determine that equation of that curve which we will use. You can do a common denominator here. You'll have x square b square plus y square a square is equal to take the common denominator on the other side a square b square. You've seen this before in the area of an ellipse derivation video. If you're solving here with regards to integration with regards to dx you have to solve for y. You have y square a square is equal to a square b square minus x square b square and we will expedite some of these procedures because you've seen them before. You solve for this y over here and you'll end up having a square b square minus x square b square over a square root. You can isolate here b square and you have an a square minus x square all over a square and you're doing the root of this but these are easily brought out. You end up having a b over a root a square minus x square and this right here is your equation of f of x or you can say y. The curve which will be integrating or will contribute to the integration procedure. If you were to graph this, 
you know you're looking at a horizontally directed ellipse it's not meant to look here like a circle but it's an ellipse all right but since you have a radical or here we're only limited to a half of that ellipse shape therefore you have to multiply here by two to capture the other half which is not being seen because of this radical and you can do so by putting a two over here so this right here curve represents everything you see over here and you know very well the distance from your line of axis or line of rotation upwards to that curve could very well be what is called the radius but here you know ellipses don't have a radius but we can informally use that term of a radius so this equation has to go through our procedure if you were to start determining the area of an ellipse you know you you've seen that in the area video you would basically just look at this from a minus a to a and i'm going to really do this fast a very quick shortcut you're basically looking at 2b over a a square minus x square dx you could even write this as a 2 and eliminate this minus a and then change by means of a even function shortcut that you know if you were to integrate all of this using trigonometric substitution technique and the procedure that you've seen in the area of the ellipse video you'll end up getting the area of an ellipse to be pi a b so this is something we need to keep on the side that the area of an ellipse in whatever direction whether it's a horizontally or vertically direct ellipse is always pi a b now if we start looking at the volume derivation procedure you know you have your ellipse in these cross-sectional slices that you'll pluck out so all of these cross-sectional slices, which will really be ellipses, will be integrated from minus a to a for your volume determination formula of the ellipsoid. And each of these cross-sectional slices, as I've mentioned before, actually is an ellipse. And each of these ellipses has a certain area and you have pi ab to be put into here, which can be assumed to be pi r square. But what is this r, the radius we're looking at? In all instances, the distance from your line of axis or line of symmetry looking upward will always be your radius or your curve. But the curve is not 2b over a root of that. The curve is really just b over a root a square minus x square because that's what we've already solved for previously i only added the two over here for the area formula de derivation which we've seen in another video to compensate for the part which you don't see but this right here represents the potential radius which will go into this area formula and then that will lead you to your volume formula so let's look at that we already know our equation is that we already know the area of an ellipse cross-sectional slice is pi a b but that pi a b can technically be assumed pi a b for the assumption we're taking it can be assumed to be pi r square we know the radius in an informal sense is equal to that equation over there b over a root a square minus x square we know an ellipse does not have a radius because you have a major and minor axis but assume it had a radius this would be it this right here would go into that formula pi the radius the informal radius square you have b over a a square minus x square square when you open that up you'll have pi b square or a square times a square minus x square all of that has opened up and you can even open up this part right here in the parentheses you'll have pi b square the a square is cancelled out you're multiplying this with this then you're multiplying that with that you get b square x square or a square you can do a common denominator and let's do it you have a common denominator here of a square and here you get a square b square minus b square x square remember all of this right here is leading us to our area of the cross-sectional slice which is really an ellipsoid, an ellipse cross-sectional slice, but we're treating it as if it were a circular cross-sectional slice. Bring the a, a square out. You have a pi over a square, and then a square b square minus b square x square. This right here is equal to our cross-sectional area slice, which will now be integrated. All of this will be integrated. So how do we integrate it? It's not hard. We already know from our graph previously, interval is from minus a to a. We were looking at a horizontally directed ellipse, Here's our area formula right here, but the pi over a square I can push outside and I will in the next step. Pi over a square and then we have a square b square minus b square x square dx. Let's push out this coefficient out and let's bring in that formula we have or the shortcut we know for an even function. You're really looking at an interval from 0 to a. 0 to a and let's push this pi and a square out. What we have left here inside is not just a square b square minus b square x square dx, which is easy to integrate with respect to x. You're doing everything here with respect to x. When you integrate it, you'll end up having a square b square. Here and x will come out. Here you'll have b square x cube over 3. Remember n plus 1 divided by n plus 1? An a and a 0. 
So for the definite integration procedure, you just put the a's and you put the zeros in places of x's and you do the difference of the two, the zero is meaningless, so let's do that. You have a two pi over a squared, a comes in place of this x, you have an a cube of b squared, minus here you have a b squared a cube over three. You can do a common denominator over here, you'll have a three a cube b squared minus a cube b squared, which will be just a 2a cube b square over 3. You can do that on the side and you can verify 2 pi over a square. This a square can cancel out with that a cube and leave an a on the top. You'll have 2 pi times 2a b square over 3. When you simplify all of this, you'll have a 4 pi over 3 you'll have an a b squared. This right here is a good formula and the formula that I'm looking for in this video for an ellipsoid. Now if you research the formulas for ellipsoids you'll see something like this 4 over 3 pi a b c but this right here you have an a b and a c this a b c represents a good formula for a spherical ellipsoid figure but this right here can be a good formula for a different type of an ellipsoid such as a oblate e ellipsoid. Here you could technically treat the AB square as an A, B, and a B. If that B were removed and substituted with a C, it's no different than you looking at 4 over 3 pi A, B, C. 4 over 3 pi A, B, and then a C. Except here we have an A, B square. And this volume formula for an ellipsoid is a good formula. It's by no means wrong. It's a good formula. But remember, there are many forms of ellipsoids out there. And then the formula differs or tweaks slightly for the different types of ellipses that are there in terms of the volumes. But this right here is the volume derivation procedure for an ellipsoid and you have seen it before your eyes and it's an easy, relatively easy procedure if you make this assumption where you treat the cross-sectional slice of an ellipse as if it were a circle and you proceed from there. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.